What I'm really hoping about the conference is that people get some personal development and professional development because we've got a really eclectic mix of speakers and breakout workshops and really importantly that people just have time to network and talk to people that they wouldn't normally get a chance to talk to. The best bit of the conference for me so far has been the range of speakers. I really enjoyed the talk from Yasmin talking about her experience of having a disability in the workplace. So I've devised a framework, I call it the four B's, which is essentially how organisations ha can have a diverse and inclusive workplace. So the four B's are these. The first B is business. So have you got senior buy-in from your business leaders? You know, do they understand the business case for getting a diverse and inclusive workplace? So business is the first B. The second B I talked about was bias. This is not just overt bias, but covert, insidious, sometimes very subtle forms of biases. And this can be within recruitment processes, the biases and barriers that people experience if you're trying to recruit diverse talent, looking at biases, and it can be misplaced paternalism. So I, as a disabled person, people make all sorts of assumptions about me. Before I was in a wheelchair, people would say, you know, what do you do? And now I'm in a wheelchair, it's, do you work? There's a soft bigotry of low expectation. No malice or ill intention, it's just there's a bias there and we have to acknowledge we all have biases. So um, trying to get rid of those biases and get rid of those barriers is the second B. The third B was behaviour. I'm not talking about grand declarations or um, gestures. It's actually about everyday behaviours. So how we can call out non-inclusive behaviour how we can, um, you know, if we are the leaders, how do we espouse that behaviour that we want others to model. Culture is defined as the worst behaviour tolerated. That's what my mentor, John Amici, says. So what behaviour are you tolerating in your organisation? Then the last B was belonging. Do people have a sense of belonging in your organisation? Do they feel that they can speak up? they can share their insights, their perspectives, their experiences, because there's no point having diversity for diversity's sake. Do they have inclusion? Where diversity is the presence of difference, inclusion is access to that different brilliance. And that belonging enables people to speak up, to share their insights, to talk about a new perspective on a problem that they have. So those are the four Bs, and that's what I share today. The speakers that spoke from a personal perspective around their journey, their understanding, I think for me they're the ones that give some passion and give some context. So for me it was definitely Stephen and I think the things that he actually mentioned about for us to be visible. For anybody aspiring to be a chief executive that comes from an HR background, there's probably a few tips I'd suggest. First of all is um, be prepared to step forward and volunteer for things outside your professional comfort zone. I have to say when I suddenly found myself in charge of legal and democratic services and running elections, that was a bit mind-blowing, but you know what, sometimes stepping forward and pushing yourself is a good way to learn. So that's tip number one. Tip number two would always be the point around you've got to keep learning. So once you get really comfortable in role and everything's running really well, think about what you're going to do to stretch yourself because you can become complacent if you just keep things ticking over so start thinking about what else can I do what can I do differently and talk to others about that and that leads me on to my third and final insight have a great network it's great to be well networked within your organization it's great to have a good team to work with find your professional tribe network with colleagues whether that's through PPMA the CIPD or any other network you might be privy to but use the opportunity to learn from others to share with others and really improve your practice that way it's fantastic to get out of the office and have the space to talk to other professionals, hear from professionals, best in field. I went to a presentation this morning about organisation resilience. So it was really interesting because it, it um, covered a whole different range of concepts and ideas and it related to a lot of the issues that you know, I'm facing at the moment at work. I think organisational resilience is actually a phenomenon rather than it is anything else. So I would say we've got to pay a lot of attention to the systems that we work in and how people are being in those systems as part of it. We've then got to think about actually what impact looks like because if we want to be resilient we need to know what the impact is of a challenge that's forcing us to be resilient uh, and that I think we need to go beyond crude measures and into things that are much more about feelings and emotions but also that link to sustainable performance. And then the final thing is really we've got to table trust. We've got to bring trust into conversations where we go we can only be resilient if we absolutely trust each other and the system we're in. 
For me, it was spending time with like-minded people. Um, I, I, personally, I feel really energised. I've really enjoyed the talks on hybrid working so far. Uh, like a lot of organisations, we're doing a review, so it's timely. There is no one-size-fits-all approach to hybrid working, and we must personalise the employee experience. If you think about it, our whole environments in which we work are, are unique to us. We have our own unique home set up, we have our own unique workplace set up as well. And that means that the way we do work and the way we experience work and the way we approach it is already quite different. So what we cannot do and must not do is have policies that are very rigid and apply to the many, to the majority. We've got to have guiding principles about what work means. I've been talking about how we rethink work, right down to a granular level, task by task, looking at how and where and when each task needs to be done and seeing the proportion of tasks that need to be doing in a certain way for each job, then working on team level, then working on, on an organisational level. We've got then the inevitable conclusion which is a successful hybrid working approach. We'll end up with something that works for each individual, for each team, for each organisation. If we started with an arbitrary days of the week split, two days here, three days there, we're going to ride roughshod over individual preferences and circumstances and not really cater for the way work needs to be done. We'll end up with something that doesn't suit the majority of people or does more through luck than judgement. So we need to be really careful, really conscious, really deliberate about the way we rethink work and rethink hybrid working and we end up with something that works for everybody. The best part has been networking with people and also listening to some of the speeches and the presentations, it's been really inspiring. The speakers today have been really good, really different, so yeah, variety as well. The characteristics of AI is that it can understand natural language, it can analyse vast amounts of data, complex data, and it can make simple recommendations. And therefore it means that for HR professionals you can use AI throughout the employee life cycle from the recruitment process because AI can analyse CVs through to the onboarding process it can recommend training or potential roles for individuals through to salary recommendations it can analyse data on people's skills and market rates of pay and of course it can provide support to employees and managers answering their simple HR queries like how much leave do I have left? These types of queries, AI is really effective at answering because it can read the data and provide a simple response. It's my first time here, so um, yeah, it's just really good hearing about all the current issues and, and hot topics really. I think some of the speakers have been fabulous. Um, you know, in terms of the compassion, about leadership, about really identifying in the room, about being the authentic selves. The overall thing that's really important for organisations to think about is that there's a long way to go. What the research is showing is that we are slowly moving the dial in terms of managers accepting that actually people can be productive and motivated and good workers at home. We know that overwhelmingly the research shows that people want to work in a hybrid way, so it's here to stay. So then the question is, you know, how do we close the gap between the challenges that people are having so you've still got a big proportion of managers who, who don't trust employees to work hybrid. How do we sort of start to change their attitudes towards it? And also how do we upskill them? Because a lot of this you know, lack of belief that hybrid working can work comes from their manager's own lack of self-confidence or competence in leading in that way. How do we close that skills gap? The things that we're that organizations are um, struggling with are things that have been problems for decades. So my hope is that in an era of hybrid working where we absolutely cannot afford to lose anybody's you know um, motivation commitment performance you know it will be the, the business case it will be the final catalyst for us to start to address those sort of long intractable leadership deficits in our organizations and that is you know that is the exciting thing you know, for the future
Oh, the conference has been amazing. It's been so good to speak to the delegates. We've had some really interesting conversations and insightful conversations, uh, and we're already looking forward to booking up for next year's. It's been wonderful, very vibrant, very busy. Um, lots and lots of delegates wanted to know a little bit more about ourselves. We partnered with the PPMA for many years and it's, it's always been a very engaging event. In terms of meeting the delegates, it's been so engaging and that brings um, a lot of energy. It's been absolutely amazing, um, really, you know, engaging. People have been coming over. We've spoke to lots of new people, spoke to people who we already deal with, but we can get our message across to them as well. So it's been absolutely amazing for us. I've been to quite a few PPMA conferences now. I think this is my 11th conference. Everyone's back, eager to connect. The conference has been great this year. The energy in the room has been so positive. We've had some great conversations. We can't wait for next year. We've really enjoyed it. This conference has been really good for Jobs Go Public this year. It's been a while since we've been at the conference. It feels great to be here and we've connected with lots of old colleagues and friends that we've, we've spoken to over the years. It is our second conference. Uh, we was at the one last year in Manchester and we found it very, very beneficial for the company. It's been a great opportunity to network and speak to so many different public sector employers. The conference has been as good as always, really good interaction, great to meet um, faces that we know, that we work with, um, but also new contacts, building new relationships. So from an exhibitor's point of view and a sponsor point of view, extremely worthwhile. The round table is something that's new to us this year, extremely well attended, really good feedback um, on the subject matter. So yeah, 100% great as always. Anybody uh, thinking of sponsoring PPMA event next year, I would say absolutely go for it. It's a really good way of interacting with a fantastically strong network of uh, experienced HR professionals. Um, you get a lot of time to speak to everybody. Everybody's really open and welcoming. I think it's been an absolutely great three days. I think we've had lots of enthusiasm, lots of engagement. What's been great is a really eclectic mix of speakers, of breakout sessions, just covering the whole gamut of the things that are HR. It's been really, really good. Love this year and can't wait for next year.